Al-Khwizmi, the father of algebra, welcome. You're probably fed up with me complaining about YouTube's algorithms that seem to have enslaved me. So I thought I'd explore where the term algorithm actually comes from. In addition, I suppose I've got another motive in doing in, in issuing this. And that is that the West seems to gloat in suggesting that Islam has never made any contribution to understanding or science. Now that wouldn't matter, but it feeds into a minority branch of Islam, <coughs> which actually wants to reject all the advances that have been made in Islam and turn the clock back to the time of Muhammad. So I, I find it quite a dangerous combination that, that the West is promoting this and there is a not insignificant minority within Islam that laps it up. So, yeah, I thought I'd look at the polymath, al Karazi. And his real name was Mohammed ibn Musa al Karazi. He somewhere round about 780 to 850. And yeah, he was a Persian polymath, probably from Khawazam, hence his name, uh, a region that was part of Persia and is now part of Turkmenistan and Uzbekistan. And he oversaw the translation of major Greek and Indian mathematical and astronomy, uh, astronomy works, uh, particularly those of Brahmagupta um, into Arabic at the House of Wisdom in Baghdad. Now, I'll indicate where his theories have taken from Brahmagupta, but I don't want to give the, the impression that he was solely a translator, as he also produced the original works which had a lasting influence on Islam. And after his work spread to Europe through Latin translations in the 17th century, especially by Robert of Chester, uh, to later European mathematicians, al Khwarizmi's contributions to mathematics, geography, astronomy, cartography, established the basis for innovation in algebra and trigonometry. Along with his colleagues, the Banu Musa, who were also scholars at the House of Wisdom in Baghdad, they translated Greek scientific manuscripts, but they also studied and wrote on algebra, geometry and astronomy. In around 820, he was appointed as the astronomer and the head of the library, the House of Wisdom, and later became a director. The compendious book on calculation by completing, completion and balancing, or Al-Kitab al-Muqtasar Fishab al-Jabba wal-Muqtaba. Now, Brahma Gupta gave a solution to general linear equations in the 18th chapter of the uh, Brahma Saputra uh, Aspidata. Uh, and Al-Khwazami Al, Al follows on from Brahmagupta in the Compendious Book on Calculation by Completion and Balancing. Um, and it, yeah, it's a mathematical, mathematical work written in approximately 820. Uh, the book was written by, with the encouragement of the Caliph al-Muman uh, as popular work on calculation and is full of examples of application to the wider range of problems in trade, surveying, uh, but particularly inheritance, particularly inheritance. The term algebra is derived from the name of the basis of the operations and equations, algebra, meaning restoration, referring to adding numbers on both sides of the equation to consolidate or cancel them, which is described in the book. It provides an exhaustive account of solving polynormal equations up to the second degree, and discuss the fundamental methods of reduction and balancing, referring to the transposition of terms on either side of the equation, 
So what I mean is the cancellation of like items on opposite sides of the equation. Come on, come on, you remember this from your maths lessons at school. Yeah, you probably weren't paying much attention, but you will remember it. Uh, rather interestingly, there was naturally no there was there was naturally no standard way of depicting these classifications at the time, because this was the first time they'd been written about. So much is explained via everyday examples, particularly in terms of inheritance. He even illustrated the equations by drawing squares and then drawing down from the squares minor squares. So this, this linked his algebra to trigonometry. Arithmetic. The four fundamental oper operations in arithmetic, addition, subtraction, multiplication and division, were known to many cultures before Brahmagupta. Uh, but the current system is based on the Hindu-Arabic numeral system, which first appeared in the Brahma uh, Saputra Dahatta. The Brahma Saputra Sadahanta is the first book that provides rules for arithmetic manipulations that apply to zero and to negative numbers. al Khawazi's work on arithmetic was responsible for introducing what we called Arabic numerals based on what we now call the Hindu-Arabic system developed by these Indian mathematicians to the Western world. Although, of course, al Khawazami was Persian, not Arabic, so... When we used to call it Arabic, we got it completely wrong. al Khazami's second most influential work was on the subject of arithmetic, which, interestingly, didn't survive in the original Arabic, but did in Latin translations. His writings include the text Kitab al-Hisab al-Hindi, book on Indian computation, and perhaps more elementary text Kitab al-Jam, well, well, Tafik al-Hisab al-Hindi, uh, addition and subtraction in Indian arithmetic. The texts describe algorithms on, arith on arithmetic using 1 to 9, and the number 0 was ultimately introduced, um, which did bring in what we call Arabic numerals, or now Hindu-Arabic numerals, first to the Islamic world and then to the Western world. Previously, before that, the Greek system had been used, which worked in a very similar way to, to Roman numerals, so pretty impossible to do many things with. As a part of the 12th century wave of Arabic science flowing into Europe via translations, these texts then revolutionised Europe. Now, al Qasabi's Latinized way name was Algorithmus and turned into methods for computation and survives today as the modern day algorithm. There you go, so that's it. And it gradually replaced the previous abacus based methods that had been used in Europe. Trigonometry in chapter 2 of the um, Brahma Masputra Sastihanta. It's entitled Planetary True Longitudes and Bamagupta presents a sign table. Now Al Khazami um, Zin al Sindhind uh, also contain tables for trigonomic functions of sines and cosines and interestingly the first table of tangents. A related treatise on spherical trigonometry has also been attributed to al Khazami. Geography. al Khazami's third major work is Kitab Surat al Ard, Book of the Description of Earth, also known as his Geography, which he finished in 833. It's a major rework in of uh, Ptolemy's second century geography and it consists of a list of 2,402 cities and their coordinates and other geographical features following an introduction. 
So the book opens with a list of latitudes and longitudes in order of weather zones. So blocks of latitudes within each, each is a weather zone by order of their longitude. So quite a unique way of doing things and indeed useful. al Khwarizmi uh, corrected Platenemy's overestimate for the length of the Mediterranean Sea from the Canary Islands to the shores of the Mediterranean and uh, Ptolemy had overestimated it at 60 degrees of longitude. He'd also depicted the Atlantic and Indian Ocean as open bodies of waters, not landlocked seas as Ptolemy had done. al prime median at the Fortunate Isles was thus around 10 degrees east of the line used by uh, Marinus and uh, Ptolemy. Most medieval Muslim gazetteers continue to use al Khwarizmi's prime meridian. Time and calendars. al Khwarizmi improved the theory and construction of sundials, uh, which were originally borrowed from Indian and Hellenistic um, examples. And because of his work, sundials were frequently placed on mosques so that you were able to see the time for prayer. al Khwarizmi wrote several other works, including a, a treatise on the Hebrew calendar titled Risha uh, Fishakra Takri al-Yahud, an extraction of the Jewish era. It describes the metionic cycle, a 15-year intercalculation cycle, the rules for determining on what day of the week, what day of the month, the Tishriya should fall and calculates the interval between Anno Mundi or the Jewish year and the Seleucid era. So it gives rules for determining the mean longitude of the sun and the moon using the Hebrew calendar. Other works, I mean, there's other notable things by him. Ibn al-Nadim's uh, Kitab al Firist, an index of Arabian books, mentions al karamis Kitab al Takriya, a book of book of uh, a book of annals, several Arabic manuscripts in Berlin, Istanbul, Tashkent, Cairo, and Paris contain further materials that probably well that have been attributed to Al Khwarizmi. He also wrote, wrote two books on uh, constructing astrolabes. Banu Musa. The Banu Musa brothers, or sons of Moses, namely Abu Jafra, Muhammad, Ibn Musa al Shakir, he was certainly born before 803 and he died in, in um, 873. Abu al Qasim, Ahmad, Ibn Musa, Ibn Shakir, and al Hassan, Ibn Musa, Ibn Shakir were 9th century Persian scholars who lived and worked in Baghdad, although some believe that al Khwarizmi was the eldest of these brothers. They're known for their book of ingenious devices, a book on automata, automatic machines and mechanical devices. Although other important works of theirs include the book on the measurement and plane of spherical figures, a foundational work on ge geometry that was frequently quoted by both Islamic and European mathematicians. Uh, the Buna Musa worked in the astronomical observatories in Baghdad, established by the Asbi, uh, Asabid, uh, Abbasid Caliph al-Mamun, al as well as research, doing research in the House of Wisdom. They also participated in the 9th century expedition to make geodisc measurements to determine the length of a degree. The Banamusa brothers are credited with inventing the first music sequencer, which was the earliest type of pro. Well, I really hope you've enjoyed this vlog and that, yeah, not only got something out of it, but provoked thoughts. I'm not here to push my beliefs, my thoughts on you. Only to open up your own thinking. 
get you thinking about the world and life. When I started The Real Magic of Java, I believed that I'd only release them every month or, or maybe every two months. Uh, but now I find myself adding to this, this subsection once or twice a week. Uh, but please subscribe and hit the bell to get notifications for when I add new parts to this subsection. In part, the reason why I'm doing it more often is that the concept has moved from filming rituals and events that took place in Java to me also describing my beliefs and philosophy. And, and that does come in response to people expressing an interest in it. But of course, you know, me actually seeing rituals and events uh, really doesn't happen so often. What I would say to you is that there's no attempt at subterfuge on my behalf. And when I do experience rituals, I will include them for you to see. And as I say, there's, there's no way I'm trying to mislead you. And if, if I believe there is subterfuge, uh, if I uncover it, I will point it out to you. I'm trying to be as honest as I can be. Now, please make comments. Please ask questions. And I'll try to be as, as honest and open with you as I can be. Of course, there will be some of you who disagree with me, particularly when I talk in terms, to, terms of my own beliefs, my own feelings. And, you know, you're welcome to alternative feelings and we can agree to disagree. Um, sometimes I find that people on YouTube can be unnecessarily attacking and aggressive and at times I don't restrain myself enough and I apologise but it's not my intention to put anybody down you know I, I know what I talk about can be emotive um, and it, it can be challenging challenging to your beliefs um, but you know I, I'd love to enter an open discussion a heartfelt discussion but Unfortunately, I, I often come across things that are, oh, especially when people quote the scriptures to me. I, I, I've just no idea where it takes us, you know, because I'm speaking from the heart, you know. I mean, you know, sorry, sorry, if you want to quote the scriptures, I mean, do so, but it doesn't have much impact on me, you know. I personally have no desire to impose my feelings on you, and I suppose when... People try to do it to me, I, you know, it, it, well, it washes off, you know. All I'm trying to do is, I, 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 I'm trying to share my feelings with you. And I, I'd love, I'd love an open discussion on feelings. I really would. I really would love it, you know. And, and sorry, sorry if I don't always react as, as best I should. I, I try and cure this in myself. But I think this is part of the sort of narcissism of social media that I talk about so much in this subsection so look if you've enjoyed it i really urge you to listen to other sections on this channel particularly the four audio books that i've uploaded onto this channel yes they are in a novel format they are novels but they go into much greater depth than my thoughts and feelings now what i would say to you is these are sequential so my thoughts and feelings develop as we go through each chapter and each book. So it does begin with 1.1, the Chinese cemetery. But, you know, hey, it's up to you. Feel free to dip in as, as you wish, as you want. And, you know, really heartfelt thanks for listening to this. And I really want to say a great big thank you and God bless you. Grammable machine. Thank you.